Let us pray. Dear Lord, it is good to be here with your people, to be able to sing with them soon, very soon, we're going to see the King. We sing that because of your promise to us. We hear in Isaiah today, my salvation is on the way. Let us not grow weary, Lord, in waiting. Give us patience and help us to trust that indeed you will come back, and that you have given us work to do while we are waiting for you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to be back again. I want to start off by saying a real simple statement. Every day, people are dying and going to hell. It's real simple, and sometimes I think we can't even comprehend that or wrap our arms around it, so we just want to kind of go about our lives and just not really think about it too much. Last week, we talked about the end of the church year was approaching. Well, guess what? Today is the end of the church year. So next week, we'll be able to say, Happy New Year! as far as the church year as we begin the cycle of celebrating Christ's birth. But for today, it is the last Sunday of the church year, also known in churches as Christ the King Sunday, which is why we hear readings like now to him be all glory and honor to the one and only King. And very soon, as we all just sang, very soon we will see the King. Doesn't it feel sometimes like it's a long, long time away? When we see the craziness going on in the world, it's just like, wow, is this ever going to end? Are you really going to come back, Lord? Last week we read in Daniel that when he comes again, some will have everlasting shame, some will rise to everlasting life. That should be a concern to us, God's people, God's church, that every day people are dying and going to hell. It is good for us to reflect and to think about that as well as are you sure yourself where you are going? There are people who can be sitting in church and still wondering where they are going to when they die. It is good for us to reflect and to think. The Bible says, teach us to number our days and apply our hearts to wisdom. Don't get caught in this kind of a trap. Here we go. Ready? Youth. I'm too young to think about that. Manhood, womanhood, I'm too busy to think about that. As we begin to mature, I'm too anxious to think about that. Old age, well, I'm kind of too set in my ways now to think about that. Death, too late to think about that. Eternity, I have forever now. To think about that. Every day people are dying and going to hell. It should be the mission of the church, because that's what God gave the church, was a mission to go out into all the world. It says in Isaiah today, and I rejoice in this with you, my salvation is on the way. Wow. What would happen, do you think, if people got as excited about that as Black Friday coming up? Or Christmas and all of the stuff that goes along with that. People are talking about it. You can start feeling it. Now the snow is putting people in the mood. Christmas is on its way. And isn't that a cool thought if we as Christians could say, yeah, Christ is on his way too. Christmas, we celebrate his first coming, but he's coming again. My salvation is on the way. I can't wait for heaven, can't you? No more suffering, no more crying, no more death. No more what? Somebody give me something. No more what? No more accidents, yes. No more what? Pain, yeah. Sadness, sorrow, no more school. <laughs> Maybe you're excited about that. So. The word tells us that the gospel must first be preached. And then the end will come. Did you ever stop to think about that? We hear people all the time, oh, I just wish the God would come back. I wish the Lord would just take me home. And the gospel must first be preached, and then the end will come. 
So instead of whining, let's get about the business of getting that word out there, right? The gospel must first be preached, and then the end will come. It says in our Jude reading, save others by snatching them out of the fire. Wow, be merciful to them. You know, as Christians, sometimes I think we tell people about Jesus, we start getting them to come to church, and we expect that they just start walking this Christian life. They know all about tithing and what a devotional life is all about and, and how to get rid of all the bad habits in their life. It says, be merciful to those who doubt. Have patience with people. Bring them along. Share with them the joy. My wife and I got to be part of PLI when we were uh, uh, at Lord of Life. It uh, stands for Pastoral Leadership Institute. And it was kind of for pastors that kind of wanted to be, you know, take their church kind of on the cutting edge. And our last uh, session was, uh, of the four years, was uh, one of the sessions was in uh, uh, San Diego. And I bring that up because I loved Pastor Scott Rishi out there and the talks that he gave us. The passion and the concern that he had for souls was amazing. I loved the way he talked. And I still carry this thing around, the note that I was, I was taking notes, and this is what he says here. I was thinking about this when the text says, be merciful to those who doubt. Have some compassion. Have some mercy. We've been shown mercy, right? He says, when you want to help someone grow as a disciple, help them come to terms with their fear and loss of what they have given up. People grieve the loss of alcohol or an affair, whatever. It's the fear of the unknown. The question may now be, now where, Lord? To which we must help them hear Jesus say, don't worry, I've been there before you, and I will be there when you get there. Why will he be there when we get there? Because he's never left us. That's why. He hedges us in from behind and in front of us and all around us. My salvation is on the way. I love this text. My arm will bring justice. Okay? So whatever has been made wrong will be made right. My righteousness. What's righteousness? God looks at us through Jesus. He doesn't see John Dawson and all of his sins. He sees the blood of Christ, which cleanses all of us from all of our sins. My righteousness draws near. You know, I don't see anything about us in this text. Do you? My arm. My righteousness, my justice, my, my, my. It's all about him. It's all about his grace and his mercy that he has shown to us. And that is why we show that to others. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. This is the hope that we have. This is the hope that we want to share with other people. It's a sure hope. Is this your hope? Is this what you long for? Is this what you're waiting for? Is this what you live for? For all those who wait. The scriptures tell us today, my salvation is on the way. It's almost as if in this text, when I first read it, the first thing that I thought was, hang in there. You know, hang in there. My salvation is on the way. But I'm not going to say hang in there to you because you know what? I've made it a new policy of mine that I do not tell people when they are going through struggles. I don't say, hey, hang in there. You know why? Because some people want to let go and they want to fall and they feel like they're going to fall and they feel like they're going to crash. They don't have the strength to hang on anymore. They just want to give up. They want to die. They want to give up. So instead I say, hey, remember who's hanging on you. Remember who's hanging on to you. I remember when my youngest was really little and we were going through the parking lot, real busy, crazy traffic, and I was trying to get into the store with her. I didn't say, hey, Kelsey, hang on to me. How crazy. Oh, no, she, where did she go, right? I grabbed her hand, and I didn't have to say, hang on. I didn't have to say, hang in there, because I had her, and I knew that we were going to make it into the store because I wouldn't let go. Experiencing problems, tragedy, trouble, sadness, grief, loneliness. I'm not going to tell you to hang in there, but I'm going to remind you of who's hanging on to you. My salvation is on the way. 
it is good for us to reflect upon it. You're not too young to think about it. Anybody ever hear Sarah Groves, singer from Minnesota? She's got some really neat songs. You should uh, look them up sometimes. She has one. Uh, it's called Going Home. <laughs> I've been feeling kind of restless. I've been feeling out of place. I can hear a distant singing a song that I can't write. And it echoes of what I'm always trying to say. There's a feeling I can't capture. It's always just a prayer away. I want to know the ending. Things hoped for but not seen. But I guess that's the point of hoping anyway. Of going home. I'll meet you at the table. Going home. I'll meet you in the air. And you are never too young to think about it. Oh, I cannot wait to be home. Face to face, how can it be? Face to face, how can it be? Face to face, how can it be? Isn't that joy? Isn't that what we all long for? I pray that that is what you long for. And that you are sure, because it's not based on your actions. It's based on what God has done for you. There was a man once who was just so overworked. He just didn't know what to do. He thought he was losing it. He went to go see his counselor. You know what his counselor told him to do? I want you to go out to the cemetery and spend some time out there getting to know those people. He goes, well, how am I supposed to do that? I just want you to go out there and reflect, and I want you to remember this. They never finish their work either. And then the counselor said, no one ever does. Ah, but one does. Jesus Christ. On the cross, when he cried out, it is finished. The way the Greek is worded there, it means complete, done, once for all, never having to be done again. Can we ever say that about the things we do? Hey, I finished the dishes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Two hours later. <laughs> no, you didn't. I finished the laundry. Uh-oh. Why is the clothes piling up already again, right? You know, I just swept out the garage. I'm all finished. Oh, no. Look at it now. I'm never finished. Jesus cries out, it is finished once and for all. Never to be done again. Jesus is all about completing his work. He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that comforting to know? He's all about completion. The church year has been completed. The world will be completed. Your lives will be completed. He is the king. And I pray that he is your king, that, he, that you know his love, no matter what you've ever felt about the church. I hear people all the time, I've been hurt by the church. And I say to them, you know what? People make up the church. So really, you've been hurt by people. God doesn't hurt. God's word doesn't hurt us. God loves us. Whatever you felt about the church, I want you to know his love today. I know some of you are tired. I want you to know who's hanging on to you. You've been trying to live the Christian life out of a sense of duty, and it's become a burden. You're trying to maintain rituals, and it's leading to boredom. You're trying to indulge in some emotional experience, but guess what? That's only temporary. You're trying to live a stoic, self-disciplined life, and it's just making you tired. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, all of you who are tired. Let me give you rest. Know who it is that is holding on to you as you go about the business of snatching others out of fire, sharing with them the hope that we have so that they too can look forward with, with joy. He's coming. My salvation is on the way. The end of all things is near. And by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we will be together with him forever. Let us share that with others so that they will not have a hopeless eternity, but one filled with joy. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the joy that you've given us. I know that Satan works and likes to create doubt in us. Usually when people are doubting whether or not they're saved, it's because they're thinking about the things they have done. But we've had forgiveness proclaimed. We just heard it a little bit ago. We confess our sins. You are faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You will forgive.
forgive us. Thank you, Lord. As far as the east is from the west, justice has been served. And when God looks at Jesus on the cross, he sees justice served and that righteousness of Christ given to us. Let that fill us with joy that we may serve you, not out of duty so that it becomes a burden, but simply because we just love you, Lord, and we love what you've done for us. And if it feels tough at times, give us comfort and peace and help us not to be weary and tired. Help us to rely on you and your strength. We pray all this in Jesus.